All right, in this video, we're going to go ahead and learn how to create a sales order. Now, um, I've showed you in a previous video when you're going from estimate to sales orders, so, but we're going to pretend like we're not creating an estimate or a quote in this situation. We're just going straight into the sales order and creating it. All right, a reason to do this, maybe you have a call-in service, so someone calls in and they are phoning in to order a product and you have, you know, your sales agents take the phone call, they put in the sales order, it gets entered as a sales order so the warehouse knows that this needs to be shipped. The other reason or another reason to do it this way, you can have everything coming from the warehouse or from web store orders coming in as sales orders. Again, so that the open sales orders are sitting out there, the warehouse knows what needs to be shipped. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just create a sales order. And we're going to take a look at the customizations that are available here first. Add a couple things here. So we're going to add some terms and we're going to add some due date and we're going to add a rep. And notice how you have your custom fields down here. You could see in our other videos there the, how we make those. And we're going to add a rate column and to be picked column and all that fun stuff in the class column in here too. Okay. All right. Even though it says packing slip, that's just because of the, the template that we're using right now. So this is a sales order. Okay. So we go up here under, uh, let's go ahead and say, chain this job make sure you select the right class the reason you want to fill this information in here is it'll carry through to the invoice so if you don't want it to be have the responsibility if you don't want the um, sales rep to have the responsibility of putting a class down here uh, you only want them to have to put in one spot then you can turn that off in the customization field that you just noticed we turn off the class column and then that way they could only choose the classes from up here Okay, so using tab, as always, to go through, making sure I have all my appropriate templates information filled out, make sure I have the right date, sales order number, all the way through, purchase order number. Okay, uh, what's what purchase order do they give you? One, two, seven, eight. What are their terms? Do upon receipt. Who's the sales rep? And we're going to go ahead and add a new sales rep real quick. Um, how do they want it shipped? Right on board. Then what items are they purchasing from us? So we're just going to go ahead and say part. Okay, and they ordered 15 at the rate of $100 each. $1,500 sales order. All right. We're just going to go ahead and say save, and save right now. Yes. Um, again, since it says packing slip, I'm going to go into my template list here. And I'm going to look at my inactive templates. And we're going to turn on a couple other orders here so that we have a couple sales orders to choose from. Close out of there. So now when I do this drop down, I have some templates to choose from. So we're going to say a sales order with a rep on it. Okay. So here's, this, again, the sales order form, all the appropriate information's in here. One of the things to note from the sales order here, you can print to a packing slip if you need to uh, print a packing slip. Uh, you can also print to a pick list. And if you're going to print to a packing slip, where it's going to default to is up here under edit and under preferences, down under sales and customers, and then in the company preferences area. It has your default packing slip and pick list here. Okay, so these are two templates that you have designed ahead of time that are going to be your packing slip and your pick list. Okay, so we can go ahead. Let's go ahead and say print packing slip. All right, and we're going to print it to my cute PDF writer here. And save it to my desktop as packing. All right, and we're going to go ahead and print the pick list. Same thing, save it to the desktop as pick. Okay, so now you can take a look. When we look at the sales order, 
this is what it looks like. So this is what we're going to send over to our client, right? Here's your sales order. Here's what you ordered. Here's your rep. Here's your PO number. There's your total. All right. Now, if we look at the packing slip, you go ahead and open this up here. It looks a little different. It says packing slip. It says part, number ordered, to pick. It doesn't have any totals on it, right? Because the packing slip is what goes in the box. And if anything gets lost, that's not where you want all that information. Also, you have the pick list here. So you can print this out, send it, give it to someone in the warehouse to go walk around and pick up the different parts that they need to pick up. Pick list again, no pricing on it. It's pretty standard not to have pricing on a pick list. Okay. So they all three look different, as you can see. So once you've uh, created your sales order, everything looks like it's good. Um, you can come in here and create a purchase order straight from the sales order. So I'm going to save this. Asking me, do I want to create a purchase order for some items or all items? I'm just going to go ahead and say all. So it moves all the information right over here. Um, so I can fill it out to the appropriate vendor. And if I had a rate preset in here for that, for that part, it would come up here. But I'm just going to say 10. Okay. So it flows right through to the purchase order. I'm not going to record that for now. The sales order also, notice the column here you can see how much has been invoiced so far. So let's say we can go ahead and create an invoice and we're gonna say for all items for now. So on the invoice here, it tells me ordered, how many were previously invoiced, how many are back ordered, how many are invoicing now, your rate, all that information flows right over. The purchase, <clears throat> excuse me, the purchase order number comes over, the sales order number comes over, all the information comes over for the customer. So let's say we're gonna go ahead and send them 10 for now. We just have 10 in and we're going to have five back ordered. Notice right when I did that, changes my five back ordered right there. Okay. So when I uh, preview this, send it to my client, it's going to give them that additional information because those are columns that I've chosen. So I'm going to say save and, save and close. Okay. Now, again, uh, comes to pass. So we have in here, Usually I keep for my clients under their transaction area, you have their sales orders and you want all open sales orders showing here so that the warehouse can come in here and take a look and see only all the open sales orders. Okay. Um, you can also customize your columns here and add some additional information if you want to. But we're going to go ahead and see what the sales order is. We had five on back order. We've invoiced for 10. We're not going to get any more of these parts in. And we know that. So what you want to do is you want to close it out. So you can mark the entire sales, sales order as closed, just like that. Okay. But if we wanted to say uh, we're going to give them a different part. And oops, five of these. Okay. And so these five are going to go in there, but we're going to close out this portion of it. Okay. So... No more on back order there, but we're going to order five more of these. So you can change it up like that if you want to. Or you can close out both lines if you had two separate lines in the beginning. Okay. So that's pretty much all of the functions that you can do with the sales order. One thing to make sure to remember, though, is when you create a sales order, it's going to set aside in your inventory. If you have a sales order, you're going to have quantity on hand, quantity out on a sales order, and then... Um, you're going to have your quantity of parts available. Okay. So that's a big deal with the sales orders. It sets it aside in inventory. It doesn't take it out. Just sets it aside that this inventory is already sold.